guard is just arriving. President's office is to the left. You're looking over the backs of the audience here. About 500 people. It's a mixed honor guard, United States Marines and a British Marine. Winthrop Aldrich is here, John Hay Whitney, both former ambassadors to the United Kingdom. Bernard Baruch is here. This is Alice Roosevelt Longworth. General the Army Bradley, retired General Spots, J. Lawton Collins. Congressional delegation, Republicans Jerkson, Halleck, Kekel, Democrats, Mansfield and others. Here's the president. <laughs> Ambassador Ormsby Gore to the president on the president's other flank. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Congress, members of the cabinet, His Excellency the British Ambassador, ambassadors of the Commonwealth, old friends of uh, Sir Winston, led by Mr. Baruch, ladies and gentlemen. We gather today at a moment unique in the history of the United States. This is the first time that the United States Congress has solemnly resolved that the President of the United States shall proclaim an honorary citizenship for the citizen of another country. And in joining me to perform this happy duty, the Congress gives Sir Winston Churchill a distinction shared only with the Marcus de Lafayette. In proclaiming him an honorary citizen, I only propose a formal recognition of the place he has long since won in the history of freedom and in the affections of my and now his fellow countrymen. Whenever and wherever tyranny threatened, he has always championed liberty. Facing firmly towards the future, he has never forgotten the past. Serving six monarchs of his native Great Britain, he has served all men's freedom and dignity. In the dark days and darker nights when England stood alone and most men save Englishmen, despaired of England's life, he mobilized the English language and sent it into battle. The incandescent quality of his words illuminated the courage of his countrymen. Indifferent himself to danger, he wept over the sorrows of others. A child of the House of Commons, he became its father. 
Accustomed to the hardships of battle, he had no distaste for pleasure. Now his stately ship of life, having weathered the severest storms of a troubled century, is anchored in tranquil waters. Proof that courage and faith and zest for freedom are truly indestructible. The record of his triumphant passage will inspire free hearts all over the globe. By adding his name to our role, we mean to honor him, but his acceptance honors us much more. For no statement or proclamation can enrich its name now. The name Sir Winston Churchill is already legend. the President of the United States of America a proclamation. Whereas Sir Winston Churchill, a son of America, though a subject of Britain, has been throughout his life a firm and steadfast friend of the American people and the American nation, and whereas he has freely offered his hand and his faith in days of adversity as well as triumph, and whereas his bravery, charity, and valor, both in war and in peace, have been a flame of inspiration in freedom's darkest hour, and whereas his life has shown that no adversary can overcome and no fear can deter free men in the defense of their freedom, and whereas he's expressed himself with unsurpassed power and splendor, the aspirations of people everywhere for dignity and freedom, and whereas he has by his art as an historian and his judgment as a statesman made the past the servant of the future. Now therefore I, John F. Kennedy, President of the United States of America, under the authority contained in an act of the 88th Congress, do hereby declare Sir Winston Churchill an honorary citizen of the United States of America. In witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States of America to be affixed, done at the city of Washington this ninth day of April in the year of our Lord, 1963, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 187th. Mr. President, I have been asked to hand over to you a letter from Sir Winston Churchill, expressing to you and through you to the people of the United States his gratitude for the unprecedented honor which has been conferred upon him this day. I would ask uh, Mr. Randolph Churchill, uh, Sir Winston's son, and he's accompanied by Sir Winston's grandson, Winston Churchill, to uh, read the letter. Mr. President, members of Congress and the United States government, your excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. President, I have been informed by Mr. David Bruce that it is your intention to sign a bill conferring upon me honorary citizenship of the United States. I have received many kindnesses from the United States of America, but the honor which you now accord me is without parallel. I accept it with deep gratitude and affection. I am also most sensible of the warm-hearted action of the individual states who accorded me great compliment of their own honorary citizenships as a prelude to this act of Congress. It is a remarkable comment on our affairs that the former Prime Minister of a great sovereign state should thus be received as an honorary citizen of another. I say great sovereign state with design and emphasis, for I reject the view that Britain and the Commonwealth should now be relegated to a tame and minor role in the world. Our past is the key to our future, which I firmly trust and believe will be no less fertile and glorious. Let no man underrate our energies, our potentialities, and our abiding power for good. 
I am, as you know, half American by blood. And the story of my association with that mighty and benevolent nation goes back nearly 90 years to the day of my father's marriage. In this century of storm and tragedy, I contemplate with high satisfaction the constant factor of the interwoven and upward progress of our peoples. Our comradeship and our brotherhood in war were unexampled. We stood together, and because of that fact, the free world now stands. Nor is our partnership any exclusive nature. The Atlantic community is a dream that can well be fulfilled to the detriment of none and to the enduring benefit and honor of the great democracies. Mr. President, your action illuminates the theme of unity of the English-speaking peoples, to which I have devoted a large part of my life. I would ask you to accept yourself and to convey to both houses of Congress and through them to the American people my solemn and heartfelt thanks for this unique distinction which will always be proudly remembered by my descendants, Winston S. Churchill. Acting Secretary of State. President, I hand you a honorary citizen's passport for Sir Winston. This is the only document of its kind in existence, a unique document for a unique citizen. Thank you very much. The President and the First Lady will receive their guests in the East Room. The Diplomatic Corps. Please proceed immediately following the President, the other guests following the Diplomatic Corps. Thank you.